Hey, what's up, guys? So, the folks over at Inventables sent me out one of their new CNC machines called the X-Carve. And it came in as a kit, so as you can imagine, that was a ton of fun to put together. And my goal with this machine is to mill my own PCBs. So, no more waiting two to three weeks for a PCB to come in. Now I can mill them out right here with my new X-Carve. But in the meantime, I've been using this machine to engrave signs, uh, mill my own parts, um, all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, recently we had a little trade show um, at work and I designed a Bluetooth connected catapult. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is what I came up with for the Bluetooth controlled catapult. We've got an iPad running an iOS app that I wrote to control this catapult with Bluetooth. And here's how it works. We pull the slider back here and we can kind of pull that, that arm back. And then we pick some level we like, some power level. And then we click launch. Okay. And everything you see here was milled using the X-Carve. So that was pretty cool. And uh, the electronics, I can just mention a, a few parts here. We've got the Arduino down there with an NRF 8001 Bluetooth module um, with a little easy driver, stepper driver, and then a big stepper motor. And it's basically just pulling this back. And then when you click launch, it's letting go of the enable pin and we've got rubber bands there to kind of pull it back and that's how it works so we sort of had uh, a group of mugs you know in front of this with uh, the projectile being a ping pong ball and if you made it into a pink into a mug then you won that mug so uh, let's uh, let's do a quick demo of the X carve and how I was able to mill the NEMA 23 stepper motor mount uh, using the X-Carve. Alright, so I want to give you guys a quick little demo on how to actually make a part with the X-Carve and show you how easy it is to kind of like ad hoc just kind of whip up a part uh, without like any real like CAD software like AutoCAD or anything like that. We can just with our uh, ruler we can kind of figure out the dimensions of the part we're trying to make and then enter them right into the web interface and get carving. So um, we're going to make a motor mount for this stepper motor, and this is a NEMA 23 standard uh, motor mount. So um, I'm thinking we'll use this piece of wood here, and it maybe be it'll maybe be about that size. So we need to carve a circle out of this out of this wood so that this little standoff plate here passes through. Um, We'll carve holes for the, the mounting holes there, and then uh, maybe even add some holes at the bottom to mount to the base. So let's just get started here with a little bit of planning as to how, uh, how the, the dimensions of this mount and what they're going to be. So the motor itself, let's see here, is about 2.2 by 2.2 so let's add about 0.1 to that so that the width will be about 2.3 and then the height of the mount can be uh, let's see be about 4.3 yeah that seems about right we don't want to go all the way to the edge but about 4.3 and that should work okay so let's go ahead and jump over to the web interface here and uh, this is really cool. This is called Easel, and you get to this through the Inventable site. And this is a web interface for entering in your designs to uh, to talk to the X-Carve. So uh, from here, you can engrave simple things like signs. You can engrave shapes. You can even import .svg files. So if you uh, if you draw up some detailed design in a, in a software package like Inkscape, you can export that .svg and bring it into here and then uh, engrave it. So um, let's just get started here. So materials, we'll go in here. And uh, I'm going to just set the, let's see, I already did measure the width of this, but uh, I'll just show you. It's about 2.210. Maybe a little thicker than that, but I want to go all the way around the wood. Just double check that real quick. Yeah, so it's about 0.210, and we'll leave the material at 
birch and all these other settings alone. Okay, so let's leave that as is. And let's just bring in a box here and we can go to cut. So we're going to go down 0 0.200 instead of 0 0.210 because we don't want to cut all the way through it. We want to leave just a little bit so that we can actually, with an X-Acto knife, just cut our mount right out of the material. And we're going to go to outline and we'll just go on path with that. So you can change, you know, how the CNC machine is going to cut out this square here. Okay, and if we go to shape here, now we can set a few things up. So the bottom left corner, let's go to zero and zero for the X and Y on that. Okay, the width we said is going to be 4.3. I think I might have called it the height earlier. The height will be 2.3. Okay. And now we can bring in a circle for this this little plate here that kind of stands off, that'll be our center point for the motor as well. So let's, um, let's set that up. We're going to do, let's cut on the inside of that. Since we don't care about any of the material in the middle, we actually want to cut this out. And again, we'll go down point two. And the shape center is going to be at the center of this which will be 2.3 divided by 2. Okay, so 1.15. And the X is what we need to figure out next. So we could go in by, so the, the uh, width of this motor is 2.2. Is so if we went right up to the edge, we could just set that to you know 1.1 and that would go right in. But I want to add about 0.1 to the top of this. So let's go with 1.2 for that Y. Oh, did I just change that? Yeah, it did, didn't it? So 1.2 for that. And the width and height of this, so let's just measure that real quick. Yeah, it's about 1.5, but let's add mm, 1.5. Let's make it 1.51. 1.51 and 1.51. Okay, cool. So there we have it. Let's zoom in a little bit on that. You know, this interface is really cool because, you know, this is your work area over here, and then on the right, you can kind of get a preview of what the machine is actually going to cut out. Okay, so now let's get those mounting holes in. And this is going to be a little tricky because we need to put these in relation so that they line up perfectly with this center point of the motor. Okay. So let's drag in a little circle here just, just to bring it in for now. and. We'll resize it later. And we need to figure out where to put these. And since it's a perfect square, we can sort of just measure. Let's see, let's just measure what the point from you know from one mounting hole, the center to center of these these mounting holes. And it looks like it's at about 1.1.85. Five. So 1.85, okay, so 1.85 divided by 2 gives us 0.925, and we know that this is the center, so, so 0.925 to the left, uh, up to the right, and to the bottom will be where those locations for those mining holes will be. So let's... Uh, Let's, before I start forgetting everything here, let's just start working through that. So this is at 1.2 and 1.15. So let's just get started here and put in, uh, let's, let's set the, the mounting hole right here first. So that will be, um, let me go back here. So that's X 1.2 minus the 0.925. So this, X, sorry, 
This one's x will be the point 0.275, and its y will be, oh crap, will be this one's y plus the 9, 0.925. So 1.115 1, plus 0.925 would be the 2.075. 2 and then now let's go over here and measure how, what the diameter of that hole needs to be. And it's like mm, 0.23, 0.23 will work. 0.23 and 0.23. Okay, cool. And then we'll make a depth cut of 0.21. And on the inside of that guy like that. Cool, so there it is. Um, and hopefully I did that right. So now what we can do is do the other three, and we'll just copy and paste that one. And it copied and pasted that in the same, with the same y value. So now we can do, put in the x, which will be this one's x, which is 1.2 plus the 0.925, gives us, let's see here, the x. Come on. There we go. 2.125. Okay. There we go. Now the other ones should be pretty easy because they're just a mirror of those. So that'll be down here and that'll have the same X as that one. The Y will be 1.15 now minus 0.925. So that should be it a y of 0.225, like that, perfect. Now let's just go ahead and, actually, better yet, why don't we copy this one, okay? And we'll just grab this one's x, which is 2.125, 2.125, perfect, look at that. And there's the mount, pretty much. So now let's just add some mounting holes for the actual mount itself. And I'll just show you how to do that really quickly. The, the width of the base, I'm just gonna measure really quickly here, is point, point 0.5. So we want it to be, these mounting holes to be center with that base. So we just have to go, and we know that this width here is 4.3 so we just need to go 4.3 minus a half well a quarter because it's a 0.5 width so 0 0.25 4.05 for this one so that's an x of 4.05 like that okay that's that looks pretty good and let's throw in one more up here. Okay. 4.15, perfect, cool. And for good measure, let's just throw in one more, this time centered with the material. So we know that that is, would be, uh-oh. I don't wanna screw up anything here. So this center here, yeah, is it the 1.15, so let's just throw that in there, 1.15. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and anchor our material down. Okay, so I'm just making sure that as it's cutting this, it's not gonna crash into my, uh, my anchors. Okay, so we're good. So 4.3 by 2.3. Um, I've already got my bit installed, or my milling bit. And let's just bring this forward a little bit here. And now we're ready to power this on and home it. So let's Power up the X curve here. Okay. 
and we're over here in the uh, web interface. I'm going to plug in the USB cable. Okay, and you notice that the carve button up here turned green so that it's connected to the X curve here. So let's start the homing cycle. And I actually have the homing switches. If you didn't have the homing switches, then you would not be able to home it like this. So it's raising the Z axis up until it hits that limit switch. Okay. And then now it's bringing it to the home position. Okay. Cool. Material thickness, yeah, we're good with 0.21. Material secure, um, I'm using this bit here, the 116. Confirm that. And then now we're going to confirm the home position. And we do this by actually bringing the bit down so that it's just touching the most left bottom point there. So this point here in our design. So let's go ahead and bring that down. Now, you got to be really careful with this. When I first did this the first time, I actually brought it down and smashed it into the material, the bit, and actually broke it. So a little trick is to take a piece of paper, and once you start getting close, bring it down 0 .001 at a time so you can change the interval here. And then once you can't pull the paper, then you know you're close enough, and that's and the thickness of the paper is maybe 0 0.002, two inches thick, so, um, okay, so let me finish this, we're going to bring it up a little bit with the Y, okay, that's pretty good there, bring the X over a little bit, okay, maybe a smidgen more, yeah, that looks good. And then we'll keep bringing the Y or the Z down a little bit more. Okay, we're going to widen up that a little bit. So now we're at 0 .001. And then using this technique here, we'll go ahead and kind of keep moving it. Okay, so right there, that's pretty good. So we're going to confirm that home position. Raise the bit. Turn the spindle on, and confirm it, and let's go. Alright, and there you have it. We have a NEMA 23 mount and it fits like a glove. The only thing I would do differently next time would be to widen this up slightly and maybe uh, actually uh, mill a little bit deeper. Maybe instead of 0.2, maybe like 0.22, something like that. Um, because it was a little tricky to, to carve out uh, maybe some of those pieces. So here's what I had to you know, kind of cut out with my pocket knife here. So it was a little tricky. I could have went a little deeper on that. But anyway, that is the video. I just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown on the X-Carve, show you how easy it is to quickly mill parts out for your projects. And this part is ready to go. So that's it. Thanks for watching.